Welcome back to Matters of Faith. I'm Christiana Bakker and our guest today is Dr. Murad Hoffman. And we're talking about Islam being a rational faith. Now, we left off in the Age of Enlightenment and in Islamic Spain. Could you enlighten us? <laughs> <laughs> what other contributions did Al-Andalus Islamic Spain give to Europe? To begin with something that seems unimportant, the olive tree, <laughs> oh. which one finds now in Europe, in most of Europe, was imported from North Africa by Muslims into Spain. Today, Spain is a, an olive country. Yes. But of course, also imported were the numbering <coughs> by the introduction of what is called Arab numbers. I say what is called Arab numbers is because originally these numbers came from India yes. into the Arab world. However, the Muslims invented the zero. Oh. And without the zero, you can't do mathematics. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine that <laughs> the West worked with Roman numerals? even during the Middle Ages. With Roman numerals, you can't do mathematics. You can count, yes. you can subtract. You can do what you need to do in, when you go shopping in, in the, with a bakal around the corner. It was the Arab numerals introduced via Spain into Paris that caused that revolution that later on made Europe a, a scientific giant. What else? Uh, Muslim Spain acquainted Europe with pluralism because the Muslims tolerated the Jews, tolerated the Christians. And that was unheard of. In Europe, one killed each other off until one had only one religion left. Or, as in Germany, one was so tired of killing that finally one stopped killing before all Catholics had been eliminated or all Protestants. The tolerance shown by the Muslims in Spain uh, who employed Jewish doctors Jewish ministers was something extraordinary for Europe, was a message that only now may be dawning mm -hmm. really on us. Fascinating. And then there was, uh, I suppose, pharmacology, medicine we already mentioned, astronomy. Astronomy. And uh, many other sciences. Indeed. Yes. Um, Muslim Spain is revitalized a little bit in Canada, where there is now a large Muslim community with a mosque and uh, a little Muslim village from where you can see the Alhambra. Now, um, you are a signatory of a very interesting initiative, a common word between yes. us and you. Um, this seems to be a rational um, approach uh, to mediate understanding and dialogue between the Western world, the Christian world, and, and Islam. Could you explain to us uh, what it is all about? You, seem, you told me you drafted this initiative, and what have you achieved so far? <coughs> this is an initiative from coming from Jordan, from the Al Al Bayt Foundation. Uh, that means the people of the house of, of the house of the prophet. Uh -huh. <coughs> this is a, <coughs> a small gathering of academics, Muslim academics mostly, who try to work as a think tank for the Muslim world. And Prince Razi, who is an extraordinarily capable and devoted Muslim, uh, a cousin of the king of Jordan, is doing his best to make this gathering 
relevant also in the non-Muslim world. Uh, it was his idea that we should draft uh, a declaration that would look like a, a hand spread towards the Western world, including the Vatican. And indeed, it has been successful in as far as it could be successful. After all, it is only a declaration. And it's a letter signed by 138 uh, Oh, Muslim by now scholars? it is more than 700. <coughs> 700. It is open-ended, and you can look it up in, 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 in internet. All right. There are almost 800 signatories by now, many non-Muslims included. Uh -huh. But I say uh, it goes as far as it can go. It is, so to speak, a diplomatic uh, initiative. It does not touch uh, the rank and file. It does not go down to the grassroots. Yeah. Um, so we should not overestimate the effect of that. Thank you very much, <coughs> Dr. Hoffman. This was a wonderful, enlightening conversation. I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, I think certainly Dr. Hoffman showed us how reason and rational thought are inherent in the religion of Islam, gave us his personal views and opinions and ideas on this vast subject. Of course, the Quran itself asks us again and again to use our reasoning. And on this note, I say goodbye to you and look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye-bye.